All right, here we go. Uh, good faith debate finished. Pastor Michael and I uh, just tried to get it finished. We were almost done, and I realized with the new thing we're recording with, so you can see this beautiful video. I didn't click record. It's probably because the Lord did not want me mad uh, because I was actually I, seriously. We there definitely were some times that maybe maybe God didn't want that stuff getting out there. I don't think. I mean, we didn't. Don't worry. We didn't use any four letter words or any of that. We just. Right. We were unhappy, um, and we'll probably still be unhappy. I don't know if that's gonna. I I, I don't know if it's gonna get better, or if I'm gonna get more unhappy that as we funny. have to watch it all again. That would be hilarious if the Lord wanted us more unhappy. <laughs> um, it could be. It could be right. So we are gonna pick it up where we left off, which are with the right wing claims. Um, and so this is uh, this is fascinating. So I will say this since we have seen this clip now. Both Pastor Michael and I basically concluded this is the the clip that they wanted. This is what this thing was basically set up to get. So let's watch it. Oh, boy. You got to find it. <laughs> um, I would like you to speak to the people to your right that you referenced. They're more con conservative was the yeah. word that you used. Because yeah. what we hear, here's some, some common statements we've seen in the media. Things like Southern Seminary has gone liberal and woke. Reformed Theological Seminary has CRT syllabi. Tim Keller and the Gospel Coalition are the greatest threat to the gospel in our lifetime. Ooh. Those, are the, those, are the, those are the things that are said yeah. by those people that you referenced. How do you interact? With so let's just quick uh, take a moment <laughs> to, to appreciate oh, this question. Man. That is, uh, yeah, so that last one is... It's, you know, you know, the comic rule of three, right? The comic rule of three, you say one thing, second thing, then one thing that's just totally absurd. We just had that, right? <laughs> we just had here a claim about Southern Seminary and about, and about uh, RTS, RTS and, and, and TGC and Tim Keller are the worst thing to happen to a Christianity. Like what? <laughs> what yeah, are you uh, talking about? Nobody's. I, I shouldn't say nobody's saying that. I'm sure that there's some anon on Twitter that says that. That's probably yeah. true. I mean, uh, I mean, the moderator pointed out people like the media. There are people saying this, like they're somewhere. <laughs> um, yes. Let's all just take a moment of silence to reflect on the fact that they just asked this guy in this debate to just take a quick moment and defend TGC for them. <laughs> uh, let's 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 all appreciate that together. All right. Let's let's hear how Sean does it. With that, well, I, I interact with it primarily as a pastor. I've had these conversations with people who were upset at me for going woke. Believe it or not, in my church, leaving the church, you're going woke. You're part of Big Eva with my church with less than a hundred people, um, and I just I don't know. I just I'm always trying to walk the tightrope. I'm trying to have uh, careful thought, nuance. I'm. Uh, most often I'm saying, hey, some of these guys that you're saying are woke, I know them. Yep, They're my friends. Kind of that guy discipled me. I had lunch we with him last week. I heard him I'm say this on, about that person. Trust me, he's not going woke at all. Um, we did an episode on this in, in my podcast. Maybe it'll end up as a the Gospel Coalition article. But I do want to make sure that uh, the Kevin DeYoung, one, two, three, four scale, I'm a three. I do want to make sure that the threes are correcting the fours because what the fours are doing. Uh, is very dangerous. They're assuming that anyone who's just one or two clicks left of them, anyone who's even slightly sympathetic to questions of racial justice, that they are woke liberals. And it's it's nonsense. It's, it's not careful thinking. It's not Christian charity. It's the exact kind of cynicism that we abhor uh, in our opponents. There's a uh, I was recently reading Nick Needham's 2000 Years of uh, Christ Power, phenomenal volume on church history, volume three on the Reformation. He has this section on John Calvin uh, and his relationship with Martin Luther. And, and the, the first section, and I'm going to butcher this quote, he says something to the effect of like, if, were Luther to call me a devil, I would still yeah. praise him and bless him as a man of God who's done all these amazing things. And then a little later, uh, writing to one of his guys, he says, I'm ashamed of Luther, his vanity, his haughtiness, his desire to win every argument. And if I may kind of interject what I think is happening there, the way that he's treating Ulrich Zwingli in the Reformation, treating him like an enemy when in fact he's on the same team. He says, I'm ashamed of Luther. 
And that's how I feel about some of my conservative brothers and sisters and the way that they're handling this conversation. I am not happy about wokeness in the church. And you better believe I'm trying to fight it tooth and nail. But that also means that I have to kind of keep my own people in check and say like, if it's not woke, it's not woke. Tim, Tim Keller is not woke. I don't agree with everything that Tim Keller says and does, but Tim Keller's not woke. So let's stop being ridiculous. The way I didn't catch this the first time we watched it, but the way that he says that part to the moderator, like really looks at him, makes it look like he's only getting paid if he says that line. <laughs> like they gave him, they gave him that line to say, you know, I think you're muted, Matt. <laughs> uh, oh man, I'm dying laughing. Cause yes, it looks like <laughs> Tim Keller is not woke. Everyone. Uh, he's not, he's not, he's not Get me that paycheck. <laughs> oh man oh okay so how much so, by the way did you notice uh, oh man when you hear john cal like john calvin very publicly defended luther and then writing to somebody on in a private correspondence maybe said at one point because of how luther was acting he was ashamed of him yes do you notice the difference between that and maybe the constant public shaming of churches um the shaming of white evangelicals that we get in a place like this, uh, in a debate like this from McLaughlin and others, uh, the, the constant like public shame that is hoisted upon those that you don't like, that you don't want to be, a, uh, be connected with. Um, exactly. That's, that's a very different, that's very different. It's not the same thing. Calvin is writing to Swiss reformers who Luther has like publicly announced. I'm happy when, like when Ulrich Zwingli died, Luther announced, so goes the way of all heretics, right? Like, so <laughs> so Calvin is writing his friends who knew this guy when they're like, why are you praising Luther so much? And and so Calvin obviously has to explain, yeah, no, obviously the thing I'm not stoked about in his character is that, yep. right? And it's so different. Um, but God still used Luther, right? And, right? and 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 Calvin recognizes that and says it was still God working through Luther. Like Luther was still a mighty instrument in the hand of God. He was still a prophet, right? So so to yeah to <laughs> to take that and be like that's what we're doing when we constantly belittle and mock and condescend. We're gonna get that in a minute. Condescendingly <laughs> to everybody on our right. We are gonna get that in a minute. So. One thing I want to point out is uh, before I probably do the opposite of what I say I'm about to do, um, um, I want to say, like, it is very interesting, um, Sean, right? Um, like how he's presenting this, right? His desire to, like, combat wokeness this way. Like, he's clearly presenting this. Who does he think his audience is? He thinks his audience is pretty progressive, is really sympathetic to the other side. And that's why he has to communicate this way. And now I think he's wrong in doing it, but it's it's just interesting to know who he thinks TGC's audience is, mm -hmm. right? He says, I'm on this tightrope. I'm I'm having to, you know, he 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 said, I'm literally on the tightrope trying to 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 walk this line. Um and he's like, you know, people have said I'm woke and and that I'm big Eva, which by the way is a is a fair estimation of someone writing for tgc who's like maybe a podcast i do will get picked up by tgc uh you are in a movie that's famous with evangelicals you are on the tgc good faith debate fate like you are big eva my brother like i know you don't have a big church you aren't a big name maybe you're like i don't want to insult him maybe you're c-list you know like i don't know i don't know where you are on the list but you but are TGC big. asked you to come do a debate you know, I that's mean, TGC right. got you on to do this debate. That's right. And there that are good something. people. There are good people in Big Eva. That's why we celebrate yeah. KDY when we do, because of um, him being someone that people latch on to and actually says helpful things. So, Pastor Michael, let's discuss how nobody makes these claims that are basically being made here. That um, So when we looked at this, right, we talked about how, yeah, there are people because there are faculty members who have been at the Southern Baptist Seminary, who have said clearly, um, I don't want, I, quote unquote, woke things or progressive political things, right? There were people on their faculty who defended the idea that critical race theory was a helpful analytical tool, right? 
um, RTS, there was a syllabi. Again, hilarious that they're bringing these up. It's like, don't, like, go back to just ignoring these things if you don't want it. Like, uh, RTS had at least one syllabi with, like, James Cone writing on it at at least one of their campuses, um, which is obviously a book on critical race theory. Um, And so what, what the actual claim that you should be responding to is people saying, even the institutions we trust are being influenced by these things and accepting a degree, right? And the actual claim people are making about TGC and Tim Keller on these issues, you know, I don't know. I, do I need to like look into someone's eye? Like I need to watch <laughs> out. Like who do I have to say these things to? The, is that they're bad on these issues. That's the actual criticism. They're bad on these issues. They are failing at this precise point. Yep. We've literally defended Tim Keller at times, obviously yep. not for everything he says or does, but but, um, you know, we've we literally have people we, we responded to a question during one of our live streams that was like, why do you guys like Tim Keller so much? Right. So, yep. you know, we're not saying that Tim Keller is the end of the American church or the worst That's thing right. to happen. Um, TGC is moving closer, but it's not <laughs> but it's not there. We don't agree that it's there. Uh, the actual criticism, like you're saying, is that there are significant problems with some of the things these men have said, some of the things these institutions have done, um, some of the people they have platformed. And it is a serious problem, especially when you deal with a a totalizing religious worldview like CRT, wokeism, whatever you want, whatever lingo you want to use for it. Um, that is a serious problem because we know especially in watching a debate like this, that it completely shades how you see everything, yes. everything, including the white evangelicals that are all around you and are the student body and the faculty and, and like most people around you yes. um, like that. We know how you look at these people because of this. Yes. And Pastor Michael, here's what I want you to comment on, because this is something we talked about, <laughs> about the last time we attempted to record this was that this is the this is what they wanted from this debate. One, obviously, they want TGC yeah. defended. And by the way, when he says Tim Keller isn't woke, I hope he doesn't mean he's he is he doesn't have any progressive political views because he does and he believes they're good, right? Like, yeah, I'm not well, and even good. more like you know, um, critical race theory type of beliefs on the issue of race. Yeah, we know that he he talks about it. He, he talks he, about that. <laughs> and again, a, a, a true debate and conversation with him would be possible. Like he's like he's open. He'd be like, no, it's a good thing. And here's why. The, what he's trying to say is that Tim Keller doesn't accept every single like Tim Keller doesn't believe in all the transgender. Right. Like that's what he's saying. Yeah. But again. Yeah, that's that's true. But that's, again, not the conversation. But the reason they wanted this is because of how he responds to those to his right right pastor michael this is what i think comes out so clearly here and so what do you reflect yeah absolutely on and we'll see this too uh, we've seen it throughout the debate but we'll see it from mclaughlin but this is almost always the case those to the right of us how are we supposed to respond well we reject them we talk about how absurd it is how how crazy they are we talk about how how you know uh how difficult they've made it for us and how they really just don't listen and obviously they're just they're just kind of uh you know morons for believing what they do they didn't use the word morons but i mean that's what they're saying right that you know you're telling me that i'm you know that i'm can you believe that somebody would call me woke or or anything like that that's how you treat those to the right then what have we gotten from sean up to this point for those to his left mclaughlin and others Oh, sister, I love you. I appreciate you so much. There's so much about you. Oh, I'm so sympathetic to these issues and topics and to those who are, you know, desiring racial justice and, and all of this sort of thing. So in other words, anybody who's an extreme on the one side should get sympathy. But anybody who's an extreme on the other side, and we admit there are extremes. Well, they, they don't deserve sympathy. We should just speak condescendingly about them. That's what they do. They don't deserve the sympathy that the others do. But that shows you the entire tenor of the debate. The entire tenor of the debate is we need to reject these people over here. Uh, yes. But that we've talked about this a lot 
in the past, including about 15 minutes ago. <laughs> but uh, it is perfectly understandable for somebody on the on the further right, especially to the right of Sean, <laughs> who might be a little trigger happy and might be a little, you know, like they're just they're just quick to leave a church or quick to quick to become defensive when something is brought up about race or anything like that. Why? Well, because it's constantly, constantly being pushed upon them. They've grown yep. up in a world or they've lived in a world that's changed into the kind where everything is constantly racialized and and they're being told that they're in this one camp of, of white evangelicals and they've done all this bad stuff. And and because everything that, you know, uh, if, if they don't hate their grandma, then, you know, they're not, you know, truly anti-racist enough. And so the culture is pushing this on them. The education system is pushing it on them, the entertainment. And then they come to a church and all of a sudden, all of the sermons start to be about this and all the articles that TGC is putting out. And all of a sudden they're doing conferences all about the problems of these whites like that's what it comes across as. You can understand how they could feel a little defensive. You can be gracious to those people. You can be sympathetic to those people in the same way, by the way, that you can have actual sympathy and grace for those who have been completely absorbed into a woke, quote unquote, worldview. You know, yes. you can you can be actually sympathetic to both while not agreeing with either. You can do that. That's that's the actual middle. If yes. we're to have a middle, it's the middle where you can look out at these people and see that they are like sheep without a shepherd and yes. have the compassion that Christ would have on these people. But it's not just, well, I want to have compassion on the blue haired people in urban centers who will come to my art center at the church. Right. That's not how this works. You can't be selectively gracious. Right. right. True grace is the kind of grace that is shown toward all of your neighbors, not just the ones that will uh, get you in with the people that you really like on Capitol Hill. Right. And the and will and like the CNN aesthetic of this. Yeah. <laughs> right. I, I, yeah, I, I, I totally that I, that this. Yes, we should have sympathy for those who have been taken in by like people who have experienced real harm or whatever injustice um, and are taken in by this solution, we should likewise have love and desire to reach with the gospel. These people who are, are so lost and, and are now um, victims in their mind and being taken in by another form of racial essentialism, right? These things they're again, these are the tax collectors. These are the, these are sinners and it is not popular to reach them, but they need, but they do need to be reached. And so again, let's, let's take this language for those and how, how, what TGC has to say to correct those maybe on the, as they're going to say, as they turn to uh, the other debater on the other side. All right. So let's go from one flank to the other. So th there's an extreme that if we, if we don't, agree with we're labeled woke and liberal there's another extreme that if we don't agree with we might be labeled racist so what some people um, on the other side of this have just given up on white evangelicalism they're walking away they do not think that the institution is helpful in its current form and they're not hopeful enough for change so they're leaving what keeps you in the white evangelical church and what makes you hopeful Again, just to be clear, neither Pastor Michael nor I are part of the white evangelical church. What I don't I've never heard of that denomination. Can you can, can you point it out to me? I don't can you show yeah. me members in that church? <laughs> you know, the, the moderator can explain to us why his why his local church is staying in that denomination. What a strange, <laughs> what a strange place to be for the future. I mean, I'm not in a white evangelical church. Okay. Uh, I was yesterday at church between a uh, Chinese woman who was here doing her PhD at Harvard and a um, Korean woman who's, who was in Boston studying law. And I afterwards um, embraced a Ukrainian friend and a Chinese American. I mean, so well, let me, let me clarify real quick to, when I, I should say like the, the white American evangelical church right. as, a, as opposed to the historic African-American church. I, I agreed. Yeah, useful, useful clarification. What keeps is me it? Is, it? is the truth. 
And when I say that, I don't mean the truth that our churches have always acted according to Christian ethics. We haven't. What I mean is the truth as revealed in the scriptures about our Lord Jesus Christ. And that is a truth which uh, my brothers and sisters at African-American churches would 100% affirm. And it, it's, I mean, just to, to go personal for a second, I, I moved to America 14 years ago. And when I first heard that white evangelicals in America were associated with racism, I thought that can't be true. I thought that, that has to be slander against the people of God because it just, I couldn't believe it. And in, in the past sort of decade or so, as I've learned more, both from reading and from, from talking with black brothers and sisters in, in particular, the more I've, I've realized how much truth there has been in that. Now, again, that's not to say that every person who identifies as a, a white evangelical um, would, would participate in that, but that, that actually, and, you know, talking, my husband's from Oklahoma and um, one of his best friends from college, who is a, a white girl, married a black guy, a lovely, godly man. And they were advised that they should probably move to another state because it, it was just going to be really hard for them. You know where they were? It's, it's deeply heartbreaking to me that this is and has been our, our reality. But what keeps me hopeful is, is the, the truth. Um, I, I define evangelical sort of theologically rather than politically. And I know, again, that's an important We have another debate on that. We have another debate o on that. Um, where else are we to go? You know, Jesus is, is the one who has the words of eternal life. And um, churches that might um, speak more loudly about racial justice, but also um, be massively compromised when it comes to same-sex sexuality and transgender identity are, are not going to give us, um, any of us, what we, what we ultimately need. But what I long for is the day when rather than sort of harking back to a, a frankly imaginary past where we were upholding Christian ethics across the board, that instead we would work towards a, a much better future where brothers and sisters of a variety of racial and cultural backgrounds are, are trying holistically to, to read the scriptures together and to, to practice what they teach and, and to where we will be living out what Jesus is calling us to across all these areas. We won't be falling into the mistake of, I think it's a profound mistake of grouping together um, racial difference and, and love across racial difference with affirming same-sex marriage and transgender identity. So we... Okay. So... Wow. <laughs> we, were, so we were talking about this when we realized we weren't recording because yes. I... I gave up. Like, I mean, after <laughs> watching that answer, I just gave up on like. Yeah, you got to watch it again. Maybe that's why we had to do this again, because you had to watch it again. Matt. I give up, man. Did it you is... change your mind? <laughs> I didn't. So let me let me make let me just say one thing I've realized about. Look, at, I'm just like I'm just in, <laughs> I'm just in. I'm just befuddled, man. Um, the the entire project right we've had people comment on how this presenter at many times sounds fairly arrogant and maybe that is part of maybe it is her personality maybe it's not but i actually don't think it really even necessarily has to be something about her but actually something about the entire project of wokeness right this is this is a position that says in this country and in the church there are these incredibly sinful long-standing painful pasts that are coming to the table and we're coming to terms with right now and i know how to solve it like that is that is a that is a crazily arrogant position also it's i also know how to solve it for other people yes right i know Not how to just solve other people but like all the other people Right. All oh, of them sure. everywhere. All the white evangelicals and their problem. I know how to solve it. My church where we hug Ukrainians and I go to church with people who are all getting PhDs um, and are different races. We know how to solve that that garbage place. Oklahoma's problems. <laughs> yeah. That is arrogant. That is just that. Because, again, even if we grant the the if we granted the problem exists the way they're talking about it, it would be crazy to say, I know how to solve it. 
right? Pastor Michael brought up the idea that we just need to listen more um, or the, some kind of reparations. If these things are going on, it would be insane. Let's go back to when slavery was a legal reality in this country to say, you know what the solution to this is? Is if you need to listen to your slaves more. <laughs> that would be an insane solution. Now, again, understanding is part of the process, but Jesus is dealing with sinful realities and pain and need for forgiveness and justice and reconciliation is not something like is not a is not a thing we microwave and take out right it yeah, is it's a, not political jargon it's not a bumper exactly, sticker and that's what a exactly. lot of this turns into here here's my bumper sticker solution if you just vote for these people if you just have these conversations if you just read this book we're just going to fix everything we're just going to all feel better about ourselves and isn't that a common trope of of particularly white liberals they love to do this like hey everybody like i got this book and i read it and now i'm a good person you know like that is a very common like well i said the thing i subscribed to whatever i watched whatever and now you know i really know more than everybody else in this country um, that yeah. is a very common common trope that happens to be true i mean it happens to be be uh be incredibly true but yeah it you see, there's so many, there's so many I mean, things that are said, so the many. intertwining of personal stories that we have no other information about, by the way. Right. Right. I have a friend who married somebody that has different skin color and, and they were told by somebody, it might be hard for you. What does any you? of that mean? Oh yeah. And, and what does any of that mean? That? I don't know. I don't know who said it. I don't know why. I don't know the context. I don't know if they've had, you know, challenges before this. I don't know what hard means. I don't know any of that, right? Uh, and I don't know if this person was trustworthy. I don't know anything. Uh, but you intertwine it as, wow, you know, on my position, we don't want it to be hard for this couple. On your position, I'm not so certain, you know? <laughs> That's what it sounds like. And she does end, by the way, this is, notice the way that she frames the debate at the end. You can't, you can't. You can't miss this because this is this is the whole. This gives up the whole. She frames it as, well, my position is simply that I want people across racial barriers to read the Bible, to live ethically, and to love one another. That's what I want. I don't see why that's such a big problem. And I don't see why that should lump me in with with people who, you know, are, you know, actively promoting the LGBT agenda or something like that. Um, that is so obviously not the topic at hand. That's so obviously not the, the question at hand that right. it's, you know, basically you're left with, there are two possibilities here. On the one hand, you have actually accepted this totalizing worldview to such an extent that you are blind to the actual issues at play. And blind to the way that actual people live and think and are. Um, yes, of course, there are some like actually racist people in the church. And I'm glad. Do you know why? Because I want those people to be in the presence of Christ. I want them to be uh, have the operation, the common operations of the Holy Spirit at work around them. I want them to hear the gospel. I want them to be discipled and I want them to grow in Christian maturity that would bring them out of that. Just like I want for somebody like a Re Rebecca McLaughlin, for her to sit in a good church where she would hear the gospel, where she'd be disciplined and her worldview would be changed as she's becoming uh, more and more like Christ. That's what we want for people. That's exactly what we want. But Yes, there are problems, right? Yes, of course, there's always sinners. There's always problems, yada, 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 whatever clarification I'm supposed to make to uh, make me a virtuous person. But the issue at hand is not, we're all defending all of the really bad stuff that's happened throughout all of history. But that's what you're saying it is. You're saying that's, you're, you, there's, right. the framing is you guys don't want us to have inter-ethnic Bible studies and to love one another but I do. But that's so obviously not the, the issue that you are either completely blind to it. You have brought your household idols with you that like you just don't get it. 
or which means that you're not qualified to actually speak on this. Or on the other hand, uh, the more cynical side of me says you are intentionally misrepresenting the other people. You're intentionally misrepresenting the truth. I don't want to believe that. I don't want to believe that's the case. Uh, but those are those seem to me the two options. I could be wrong. Maybe there's a third way here, but those seem to me the two options that this could actually go. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think again, right. One of the signs is like um, that, that this is what is at least part of what's true is, well, 10 years ago, I thought this slander about the church was obviously not the case. Now I know basically the world is right about how bad, how bad the church is. Now, of course, it's not her church, right? It's not any experience she has specific access to. It's it's out there, right? And again, even that's one of the things I hate. Obviously, it, Michael and I don't believe that racism because it's a sin of the heart has been banished from the church. Right. But I, but I, but, and so even when we make those qualifications, like the thing I hate about doing it is it's this, like, I just have to speak out of this, like, Oh, I'm sure it exists. <laughs> right. Like I'm sure these things, you know, um, and because again, we could deal with individual circumstances where, um, where there are like, there's actual racism, but this, I, but, this slander and 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 at the end of the day this is the one thing i agree about with the clip this is what i'll leave it with is because i uh, there's there's so much more we could do and i want to get to the end of this because at this point i need us to do a driscoll react after this to cleanse my palate um <laughs> for my day um is yeah guess what if this is all true about the church i still pick it over the world i still pick it over over all the people that were apparently right about it all um, I, I pick it over the people who have slandering the church, who are criticizing it, because this is where the words of eternal life are. And yes, yep. these people are sinners and they're wrong about lots of things and and they need Jesus's forgiveness and they will probably hurt me and hurt others. But this is this is the people God is saving. And if that is where I am, no matter what slander or error they fall into, like those are my people. Right. And it's not that we can't speak against the church, but we can't join the pagan nations against the church. It is wrong to ally with Babylon against the church, even when the church is in sin. Yeah. Um, so, all right. Let's, Finish this, let's, man. let's get through it. We got we got a. the thing I'm hopeful of is that all of these end with a nice like, you know, that nice credit roll and so yes i'm hopeful we have less than four minutes left we have about three minutes left and i want to ask both of you the same question and um hopefully we can do it in three minutes nice. so obviously guarding the church is something that we are called to do paul tells the galatians to do it he he exhorts timothy guard the flock watch what's going on protect ourselves but then in our culture you also hear it's slippery slope Slippery, which is, which is in itself a logical fallacy, I know. But how do we thread this needle of really guarding ourselves, our, our, our churches as slippery church leaders, but not giving in to this fearful, slippery slope mentality? Sean, I'll start with you. Mm, I'm really glad. Pastor Michael, this is a bizarre question, by the way, just to end on. Uh, Very just quick just to end it. This is where they're ending. Yeah, this is like, you're... At, Please, TGC, when you do these again, just give them a closing statement. In light of everything that's been said, what do you want to leave people with? This idea that there's a slippery slope and we need to, but we also need to guard the church. Well, there's I'm, not, a, I mean, the slippery slope, that's a fallacy. So we don't, yeah. he's saying there's not a slippery slope. So we don't want to fall into that slippery slope of believing there's a slippery slope. <laughs> I, but I, <laughs> I don't know why this is the last question. Very um, we will see. We're about to find out with these answers. I bet there is a very specific reason this is the last question. As you did. Um, Sean looks befuddled too. The did. same way we've been doing it for 2,000 years. You know, I know it feels like one of my favorite. Uh, he has no idea what it is. Men in Black. Actually. You guys know what I'm talking about. Classic cinema. 
Agent J and Agent K are talking, and Will Smith, he's one of them. I don't remember if he's J or K. And he is freaking out because, you know, the ship is coming, and he's going to destroy it's going to destroy everyone and we got to go. And Tommy Lee Jones, he's the old, you know, grizzled veteran. And he's just sort of slowly walking towards the car, going to get his gun. It's not a big deal. And Will Smith just goes, what are you, what are you doing? The end is, and, and he just goes, the end is always coming. There's always a new threat. There's always the boogeyman. There's, there's always, you know, the worship of Baal and Gnosticism and, and Arianism and Roman Catholicism and wokeism, and there's always something there. And the answer to that is the same as it always been. Just preach Christ and Christ crucified and do it well in the context of a local church where we take evangelism and discipleship seriously, where we gather around the word and we make the gospel central in all things, and we pray to God for wisdom to not just understand the theology of the gospel, but to be able to apply it in a very confusing world corrupted by sin. Rebecca, how would you answer that? I agree with much of, of what Sean said. I think um, preaching the scriptures and um, proclaiming the gospel is, is at the heart of this. And I, I think I, I would go back to that, that twofold that we Christians should be really good at of repenting and believing. And, and I think that will help Wow. Especially the rising generation. My, my sense is that there are a lot of um, to younger folks today who've been raised in the church and have been profoundly disappointed by the what what they see, and, and I don't disagree, um, what they see as the the, the failure of um, re repentance and lamentation when it comes to um, their their elders um, in the church around race, uh, and so. You know that's precipitating them them leaving, and and I can kind of understand where that that impetus comes from. Um, so I think we need to get into a place where we are humbly and with love in our hearts, um, preaching and teaching truth when it comes to race, and preaching and teaching truth when it comes to sexuality and gender, recognizing actually the ways in which we Christians have also sinned in our treatment of gay and lesbian people outside the church and in our failure to love same-sex attracted brothers and sisters within the church, um, I think we, we can and should do that while also being very clear about yeah, the, what the yeah. Bible calls us to when it comes to Christian sexual ethics. Um, but spoiler alert, it doesn't call us to hateful treatment of anybody. You know, Jesus, Jesus calls us to love even our enemies. So I, I think love it, having a, a, a humble, loving, repentant, personally repented approach to all of these things while we, we make much of Jesus and little, little of ourselves is going to be the best way to guard the church. Well, I'm thankful for both of you. I really am. The, the ways that you have modeled um, gospel centrality and charitability over something that is dividing the church all over the United States right now. So my prayer is that this will be helpful for people watching, that conversations inside local churches and families would look more like this and less like some of the stuff that we see on Twitter. So thank you both Amen. for your time and your devotion to the things that are most important. Good faith debates. Pastor Michael, do you think our commentary <laughs> on this is the kind of conversation they hoped to, uh, to spur with, with the good faith, this good faith. Well, debate? I, um, I assume not TGC. If you want to have us on, um, we would be yeah. glad to sit down and talk about it. Um, Let's just let's just fascinate ourselves with the two options we have at the end. So at the end here, we have option one, just pre preach the gospel. You know, you don't there's always a problem. There's always a threat. We just, you know, we can't get sidetracked. Don't let those things bug you too much. Right. It's not the end of the world. Just preach the gospel. Other side, people are leaving the church because of this. The church is losing its witness. I want to bring us back to where I began. The church needs to get good, better at repenting and believing regarding these subjects, right? We need to like, we need to embrace this. And by the way, just as a quick stinger here in the last 30 seconds, we need to walk in humble, listening repentance towards the LGBTQ community as well, just because that when is I spent, when I spent the whole debate trying to distance yes. myself from those yes. who go soft on this issue. Let me close by saying, yep. And, and also this. Yes, because the, and thank you. Thank you for the demonstration of what is 
why people are concerned about wokeness. Because Michael and I have spent the three hours now, because of the part that was we missed recording, tying ourselves in knots talking about how difficult it is and the the pain, the real pain we understand exists over racial division and the actual sin that has been perpetuated also in the name of Jesus in the past. Yes, right? Not afraid to discuss that, not afraid to grant that. And we finally get it at the end where they are going to try and make us feel so like painful for that and then finally add in the, and you should feel that same way about the LGBTQ community in your midst. This, that is what wokeness is. That is the, that is the, the picture of what it does. Is it That's takes the trajectory? These, yeah, is it? It's going to pick up on the fact that you know, Jim Crow, whites only churches, all of these things were wrong and evil, and then say. And you may not realize it, but that's exactly what's happening with the church and the LGBTQ right now. You're doing now. it right now. You're still doing it. Yep. It's right now. I, well, wow. I don't I don't know. Um, it, it's also interesting, right, that this is viewed as a solution to what's happening on Twitter. Because TGC is just, just getting memed to death there. Right? Do you think like, this was their response? They were like, we got to. We need something because they're just brutalizing us. <laughs> Man, everybody's just exposing us. Let's let's come up this. You can imagine this, by the way. You can imagine this like, a, you know, in a corp, more corporate bureaucratic setting yep. where somebody's like, man, they just, you know, this is, you know, not to make the exact comparison. But, uh, you know, you think about the recent controversy with Bud Light and all of a sudden, you know, they they do what is maybe the most antithetical thing they can do for their brand. And it just tanks their numbers. They're selling nothing. And so they're like, uh, quick, let's do a, an America commercial. You know, like it's this like very like corporate, like you aren't actually listening to what's going on. Like you're so disconnected. You don't understand what the conversation is actually saying. When these people are sending memes at you, you don't understand what exactly they're saying and trying to say. Uh, yeah. You're missing it. It's it's going to be great when we, whenever we get around to reviewing the debate where should we be pro life, womb to tomb, or just womb? Like oh I mean, <laughs> like can you can you just <laughs> like do you want only babies <laughs> in the womb to live, or do you want all people to live? So Choose anyways, our, our debater, <laughs> our patrons are going to vote on which one we do next. But those are the kinds of things we have to look forward to. So, oh, uh, yeah, I don't man. know how to end this, but it was it was fun, Matt. A little Great. exasperating, but it was fun.